Hello everyone, my name is Deep Chand and welcome to another video. In this video, we will see Generative AI Roadmap. I provide you with each and every step and along with it, you will have all the resources that you need to prepare for this. First of all, thank you very much to all those who supported my previous video. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The first thing that you need to learn is natural language processing. You don't need to get too deep into the topic, but you need to know the basic concepts behind natural language processing. So first of all, learn what is natural language processing and where these applications are being used. Second, learn text processing in NLP, which contains tokenization, stop word removal, stemming and lemmatization, lower casing and punctuation removal. Once you're done with this, move on to parts of speech tagging. Parts of speech tagging is just English only. Understanding different parts of speech like noun, pronoun and all those stuff. So see where how POS can be used in NLP. Then move on to name entity recognition. This is a key step in NLP. So first learn what is name entity recognition and why it is used in NLP. Once you're done with that, move on to text vectorization. These three topics that I'm going to tell you is the core of generative AI rag models. First one, bag of words. The second one, TF-IDF. And the third one is word embeddings. Once you learn these topics, just try out some basic projects like text classification or sentiment analysis. The best resource to learn NLP is this video by Krish Nayaksa. Now once you're done with NLP, you can move on to LLM concepts. So start off with the first thing that is called attention is all you need. That is a research paper published by Google. You don't have to read the paper by yourself. There are plenty of explanations on YouTube that you can go through. So once you understand how the transformer behind that works, it will be really interesting to know that how these large language models are working. Now once you get the basic idea of how LLMs work, you can immediately start working with them. There are so many models out there, those are paid or open source. You can choose to go with the paid ones like OpenAI or Gemini or you can go with the open source ones that are there in the Hugging Face model repository. You can also use Olama. I guess Olama is the best thing that has happened to this industry. You can run almost any open source model on your laptop or on your PC. To learn about using open source models from Hugging Face, this course can help you to do that. This is free and it is offered by Hugging Face only. In case if you want to run Olama that is locally on your PC, then you can also choose to go with the Olama blog. It contains really good explanations and how to use their models locally. Now running these LLMs are simply just not enough. You need to know prompt engineering to exactly know what to pass into the LLM so that you can get a desired output. So learn prompt engineering thoroughly. There are so many different types of prompt engineering. The better you become at prompt engineering, the better you can handle any LLM. Now after you learn all of this, learn some advanced techniques that are used in LLMs like quantization. Learn what is quantization and why it is even needed. Also learn how to fine tune a customized data to a existing LLM and learn what are the advantages of doing that and not doing that. Moving on to the next topic, you need to learn Langchain. Langchain is an AI framework. It supports almost everything, starting from OpenAI to all of the open source models that are available. But why do we need to learn Langchain? Langchain is an AI framework that gives you control to make chatbots. It can give you customized memories. Langchain is a very useful thing for building chatbots and generative AI applications. So it is a must. So to learn Langchain, this Code Basics channel has a very good playlist. I personally learned from this and it is really good. So before we move on to the next topic, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more such videos. Now before we move on to next topic, I want you to build some small chatbot projects. If you need any help, let me know. I can make a separate video on how to build this basic chatbot. Here is the thing, if you use a chatbot that is just operated in the terminal, you cannot be using it to the outer world or you cannot be deploying it somewhere so that all the users can use your chatbot. So to do this, you need to know how to build proper backend. So in Python, you can use Django, FastAPI or Flask. Now most of them prefer FastAPI for these LLM deployments. And if you want to use Django, Django is definitely a very popular framework, but it is used for mostly website building purpose only. So first of all, you need to learn here is REST APIs. So learn all these HTTP methods that are mentioned in this video, like get, post, put, delete, etc. Also know about what is response codes and what are the types that you can expect. So since you're dealing with API endpoints, you need to know how to use Postman or Thunder Client or Insomnia. These tools are used to test your API endpoints. So building your backend is just not enough. You need to test it, right? So you can give inputs through them and test out 
what the response has been given so after you finish this you need to move on to little bit of advanced back end stuff so as of now you have just built a basic chatbot which does not contain or store any data so in order to store any data you need to integrate some database to it it can be mysql mongodb or anything like that so you should know how to store something in a database from the application and also to retrieve data from the application also you need to know some authentication techniques that are used to verify your users it could be oauth or bearer token i suggest that if you learn django or fast api you should learn it from the documentation itself or if you are completely a beginner and you need some hand holding i can suggest these videos Now once we are done with the back end you also need to build front end so for learning front end you need to know html css and a css framework that is called tailwind css which makes your life much easier when you learn css you will know about that also you need to learn little bit of javascript so that you can start working with their frameworks like react js angular or vue js these frameworks can help you build cool front ends To learn front end I would definitely recommend code with Harry. He teaches things in a such a way that every beginner can understand that. So basically generative AI is a full stack application. So you need to know how to deal with LLMs, the complete back end of your website and the front end of your website. So don't worry, most of the companies ask for only back end in this role. So if you're already good at back end, then you don't need to worry about front end. but having front end skills is still an advantage now once you're done with these things you should start building projects now projects should be in a such a way that you are solving some real world problems unlike just copying from any youtube video or any github repository it should just not be something which is there in the world or it should be something different from what already exists you should try to solve some real world problem in this let me tell you what a generative ai application that i built in order to get a job i actually did not solve any real world problem The generative AI application that I built was only there in the movie till I built that. If you are a Marvel fan, you must know Jarvis, Tony Stark's AI assistant. So I tried to build something like that only. I posted that project demo in my LinkedIn few months ago and that helped me get a job. To get a generative AI engineer role or a AI ML engineer role, this roadmap would be very much enough. But sometimes some company have their own demands. They can also ask for deployment. So you should also know to deploy your web application. The deployment process is a very complex one. I think I should make another video on that. Don't worry, but this roadmap is almost enough for 75% of jobs that I have seen. Even I didn't know how to deploy an application till I got a job. I hope this roadmap will help you. If you have any doubts or if you have any specific request for a video, you can just use the comment section for it and I can help you with that. So thank you for watching.